So thank you so much once again, Beverly, for joining us today. And we are so, so, so happy to have you here. And you are con our conversation number four. <laughs> so we're so thank happy you. to have you here. <laughs> Um, can you just please tell us who Beverly is? Where is she from? Where did she grow up? <laughs> who is Beverly? We want to know. I am a person who's transforming the landscape of communication through public speaking training, poetry, creativity, conversations, reaching out to teenagers and lifting them up through coaching and training and traveling learning from other people, learning and unlearning about my past and through writing as well, through creative expression. Oh. I've always been creative. My mother says when I was born, this could have been the equivalent of a C-section. She said I was so difficult to come out of my womb that the midwife had to get something to clutch me out. She always describes a metal that was brought to bring me out of the womb. And that's the description of my birth, 31st of July, 1976. I turned 45 in July this year. Oh. But it was really only when I almost turned 44 that I began to analyze what life meant. And of course, there's steps to it, isn't it? You know, when you have a moment and you think, I've made the decision, this is it. But the moment is a moment. It's temporary. It's visceral. It's only when you make a conscious decision to every day grow into that moment to make it magnificent. And that's what the last one and a half years have been, actually since lockdown, which may seem like a cliche, but my moment has turned into something magnificent because I made conscious decisions, just like how I began the Babishai Poetry Foundation. My father was a diplomat and when we were younger, I was about two years old, we left for London and I lived there for a lot of my younger childhood, for about eight years, and I became drawn to understanding what it meant to read. I would always excel in compositions. I would read. They would tell me it's time to go to bed, and I'm reading under the covers. I would read so much. I would consume books more than I consumed sweets, which is saying a lot for someone who's seven, eight, and nine living in London. I have two brothers, one older, one younger, and a younger sister who's 14 years younger than me. That's what I did. I read, I wrote, I was always fascinated by stage. When it came to dancing, I would dance. I love to use my body effectively, whether it was my voice, my brains, my hands, my feet. And so in sports, I won the trophy in rounders. When it came to swimming, I was always the first. Running, I was always the first. Oh, wow. Writing, I was always the best. When it came to dancing, we returned to Uganda. I was in Gaza High School. I won in the dancing competition. I always gave my best at anything. But for some reason, being on stage and attracting an audience, just knowing that there's an audience before me, something happened that just lit up inside of me. I just loved the impact it had, knowing that I'm in a transformational space because that's what it was. And it wasn't for the applause. It was just for that connection, which was magnetic, out of this world. I've always loved the stage. I was in a dance group for six years in church. Oh, wow. And that ended when people wanted to do their masters and they traveled, got married, had children. But I still love to dance. I dance a lot. I spent a lot of time watching billionaires talk about wealth and watching excellent dancers from VMA Awards, the billboards. I watch dancing and I watch about wealth people talking about wealth. I also watch a lot of spoken word, especially from South Africa, actually, young poets. I use them in my public speaking training. I'm a public speaking trainer of teenagers, and I often use different forms of expression to depict how we can communicate effectively using various forms of creativity. Oh. That's who I am. Oh. Yes, I live in Kampala now, and I'm ready to move to any part of the world, whether it is a Joburg or New Zealand or Sweden, I'll move with my family or four daughters and a husband. I like to say I have four children, four daughters and a husband. <laughs> and oh, wow. that, that's who I am. That's who I am. The Babshai Poetry Foundation began after my daughter was born. It was called the Beverly Nambosa Poetry Award. I was working in a women's NGO and something happened. Again, you know those moments that happened. So she was born in 2008. <laughs> I was working at this wonderful NGO which had great medical insurance. We would travel, I was driving a big car. 
It was a five minute drive from office to work, but I needed more. When she was born, I said, listen, this is some, I have to do something to leave a legacy for my daughter. And I thought, combine the things you love. You love poetry and writing, and you understand a lot about gender and women's rights. And so I began a Ugandan Women's Poetry Award called the Beverly Nambosa Poetry Award, which was supposed to be a space that promoted Ugandan women poets. In 2009, 2008, there was very little knowledge of who Ugandan women poets were. There was little promotion for them in mainstream media. And I thought, why don't I do this through a prize? And this annual prize began through an email, numbers at gmail.com. I'm talking to friends. I'm going to start this. What do you think? Yes, yes, brilliant idea. Using my email, I sent out the call. I say, hey, Ugandan women, are you out there? This oh. is an award for women aged 18 to 40. I was 33 then. I thought 40 was like 100 light years away. And I said, this is an award for you. If you write, bring original poems, three in number. Mm. We're going to judge it and give you a prize. The first prize, I think, was one $250. Was it 200 number? Then 150 and 50. It became magnificent that people started calling and saying, we love this, what is this? And I said, I was interviewed in the papers. Now being a program officer, I was the one who used to call the journalists so that they would interview the CEO and I'd say, job well done. Look, the CEO's in the papers in the New Vision and the Monitor and the Observer. It was never me. I was never that person who was in the papers. I was in the papers overwhelmed. I was called for interviews. Even before the main event, I was called for interviews. This is wonderful. Where did you get this idea from? And what are you doing with this? Why did you name it after yourself? I wasn't ready for that. All I knew is that I wanted Ugandan women poets to be known, to be profiled, to be largely publicized. I did not think I would be in the papers. I was in the papers. I can count how many, I used to collect all the paper, articles, newspapers, take photos, scan. And it, it was it was more than I could handle. Oh my god. After that, I decided we need a team. We can't just work like this, like it's a volunteer basis. It was so interesting that some donor organizations came to Uganda and they invited arts managers. I told my story and they said, That's wonderful. Would love to fund you. I said, Are you joking? That's how little I felt of myself and this achievement. Oh, they wow. said, Yes, we'd like to. They told me three times and I rejected until I said, fine, I'll do it. They have been funding us for four years now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, four years after that, they funded us. I rejected, I said, no, mine is too small. You can find other people to fund. Come on, oh, there's so many people goodness. doing wonderful things now. Four, three times I rejected until I said, fine. And I'm so grateful because you see money helps a lot. Now, <clears throat> the first time I sent out invitation cards, I, I like to be professional. And, gave out in press releases in the papers about this event. And I thought, since it's bigger than I ever imagined, I need to have a great guest of honor. Three organizations funded me. I would have never thought that. They funded me. Oh my we had dinner at a wonderful, huge Chinese restaurant in Kampala. The guest of honor was the deputy speaker of parliament. She was a woman. In her speech, she said that she received so many invitations, but this one intrigued her. It was different. It was fascinating. What is this Beverly Nambosa Poetry Award about? Oh my goodness. Oh. And since then it's been an upward journey. A few years after we went to Story Moja Festival in Nairobi and we introduced the first Ugandan poets to the festival. I said, if there's a festival in Nairobi and there are no Ugandans, we're just a bus ride away. 12 hour bus ride. In 2012, the winners went to Nairobi Story Moja Festival. After that, the next year, I brought like 13 other artists from Uganda. I said, there's a festival next door. It's magnificent. All you need is so, so many shillings. Oh Stay with God. a friend. Accommodation is cost effective. And then we had master classes with so many wonderful authors around the world. Because of this, I was invited to festivals across Africa, Nigeria, oh. South Africa. I mean, it was wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow. I won a few awards along the way as well. Oh, I kept writing. Goodness. Yes, I did my, my master's, had more children, oh, and it, it magnified. So Babi Shai grew five years after we decided let's grow to an African award, not just Ugandan women. And that's what Babi Shai has been doing. We hold festivals, oh, we have goodness. poetry nature series, poetry by Mount Renzori, by Lake Bunyoni in Western Uganda because I believe that poets are in their primal state and being against nature is just significantly powerful Oh my in goodness. that. And, and that's the journey, it's continuing. I'm so excited because I, last yeah. year was another curve, yeah. 
I can hear in your excitement. I also love how you tell your birth story. Like it's a destiny moment. It's it's that you had to be born. You had to be born for all of this. And it's so amazing with all the work that you've been doing. I like how you, you went from Uganda into Nairobi. It's just 12 you know, hours yeah. away. And, you know, it's all it's all in your passion, your, 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 your love for your work, your love for writing, yeah. your love for Africa, your love for you know it's it's so it's so beautiful can you just um mention what is the highlight of your work like what's that one highlight that's just that stands out for you it's it's connecting with people and learning you never stop learning oh wow sometimes i like to be alone i wake up at three in the morning so that i can have three hours at least on my own before the house wakes up i pray i read i invest in my work, I exercise. So by the time the house wakes up, I'm done, breakfast is set. I, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. And so that time helps me really, really engage with wealth in the morning. There's something powerful about the morning. Because of that, I, I sometimes if there was an option, I prefer to do work alone without having people involved. But when I connect with people, the learning, it's always that, that connection and the learning with somebody, whether it's a teenager, I'm training in public speaking, I run a, a company called Rich Diction, whether it's reading a poem from somebody who says, please edit this for me, whether it's someone who signed a book and is giving it to me, that connection. Mm -hmm. Recently, we had a performance, Alliance Francaise in the French Embassy approached by Bishai Poetry Foundation and said, we want a collaborative arts performance, can you do it? They gave me three weeks to put it together. And I thought, you're crazy. And they said, oh, by the way, not poets alone, get artists from different disciplines. I thought, what? Do these guys know what it takes? Especially because spaces have been closed in and out of lockdown. But they have a wonderful basement, not far from where I live. And I thought, well, if they have this huge basement they've given us for practice, and they've got a little money for facilitation, let's do it. So I called. Everyone I invited was able to attend, apart from one who was at a stage production. I called a baker, a cartoonist, a classical pianist. I called people who are different. So after writing the script, I knew these are people I wanted to include oh, because the last festival we had physically was in Lake Bunyoni in Kabale, Western Uganda. That was in 2019. And we had artists from you know, New Mexico, from Denmark, and it was really fascinating. The last one, 2020 was an online festival. So this was a chance to be physical again and have it enormous. Oh because I've spent so much time reading and learning, especially from last year, I've grown so much. I said, you know what? This is a chance to really explode. It was so wonderful. The script, everyone loved it. And uh, when the link comes out, the recording, I'll definitely share it with you. It's oh, something that stretched my capacity, but just touching each of those artists every time we had a rehearsal and learning from them. Some of them have vast experience of the stage and there they were listening to my direction with patience and also offering wonderful suggestions. It was my, so that I think it's connecting and learning something I never ever knew I would be in a space to learn. I, you know, I love what you, you, say, you, you say when you speak about connection because I feel also what I do is I love connecting with, with different people and very diverse yeah. people. So I, I, I love that. And also learning, you know, when you engage with people, yeah. there's, there's yeah. this form of learning. You, you just take away so much. And as I'm, I'm engaging with you right now, I'm learning so much about <laughs> your work and it's, it's very yeah. intriguing and I, I would want Thank to you. learn more. So I, I love what you, you said about learning and connection. Uh, this is my Thank second you. last question to you. Okay. Um, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as somebody who inspired change in communication through public speaking, through writing, through poetry, through as much creative expression as possible, body language, eye contact. I want to be known as the person who inspired that and changed mindsets, especially for groups of people who are generally neglected. Teenagers are neglected because what most people think of them, they're always on their phone, they're a nuisance. But I train teenagers. Today we had sales pitches. If those ideas are developed, those teens will be billionaires in five years. I learned so much. Sometimes I think I should be the ones to pay them. 
Oh, wow. And because I take time to listen. So I want to be known as a person who took time to change the way people create communication. I also want to be known as the person who learned about wealth, created wealth, and changed mindsets when it comes to money and wealth. Because we've grown up with such a poverty mindset yes. and that needs to change. A lot changed for me last year since lockdown. I just switched, made important decisions, took a leap of faith and every day, that's why I wake up at three because there's so much to learn. I don't have time to waste. Sleep at nine, I'm up by three. I learn so much. Money is important. As artists, we don't have any idea of this fact. I, We're so comfortable no, with small things true. and we need money. You, very, very, you know, money is important, yeah. especially in the yeah. creative, in the creative sense. Yeah. And I feel like with some creatives, we take it for granted. It's that you, you yeah. don't want to get. Sometimes it's okay for you not to get paid, whereas yeah. it's not okay. We, we need to yeah. stop charging for the work that we put yeah. out because we take yes. the time to create all this work, yeah. and it's so yeah. strenuous. Like yes. I was just suffering from a burnout three weeks ago because oh, of creating yes. so it's 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 amazing what you say about that you want to change the mindset you want to transform how we view wealth and yes. um you still ha- i have still have not forgotten that you still have to recite your poem so uh, before you recite your poem can you please yeah. like uh share your words of wisdom with any creative yes or any aspiring creative on the continent who is just yes. sitting there and has no uh way or ha- yeah. does not know how to start their journey just yeah inspire them the mindset has to change because we are creative sometimes we're waiting for a flood of emotion and a flood of muse to come upon us it's one percent 99 percent is the perspiration the hard work the discipline be consistently disciplined that's how i was able to lose weight that's how i wake up every day at three it's that discipline that moves me to make a change It's that discipline that moved me to make decisions to change my life for myself and my family. It's that decision that has made me determined to become a multi-billionaire. You see, with artists, we think my art is okay and that will make me happy. It is not okay. When you're still suffering with rent, you're the best poet in your community. You're suffering with rent. When you go home after sitting by the fireside reciting your poem over pork, everyone loves it. But you go home to the reality that you haven't paid your water bill you can hardly afford data bundles and you still have school fees to pay. It is not okay to be an artist and to be poor. Please learn structures of business. Get somebody to guide you. Let your art create money for you. Be focused on the art and create money. You will be so much more content and you'll have a far greater impact when you're able to control the resources so that when you're doing your art, It's not made because you're going to get facilitation. You're already above that. The art then becomes forefront because you have the money. So your decisions aren't made because you need money. You already have it. The art then can have such a more powerful impact. People need to change their mindsets about money and wealth. Money is so important. Make lots of it. Create wealth. Your art will blow up. It will explode and it will serve you and the world much better. Oh my goodness, I'm so moved by letting <laughs> your art create wealth for you. Like it, it, yeah. your art, your work needs to create a form of income yeah. for you and especially yeah. wealth because you're taking your time to, to create and creating is yes. not easy. It, it's really yeah. not easy. So yeah. I thank you so We much. have to be purposeful. Oh yeah, we have to be purposeful goodness. in changing oh and making goodness. sure. We, we have to understand money. We need to understand money and purposefully. <laughs> And make also it. structure as well. We need to also as yeah. develop a structure. Yes, we we creating this work. However, we need to develop a yeah. structure. Oh my goodness, uh, Beverly, I'm so I'm <laughs> I'm so moved. I'm I'm really so moved. Um, can you please recite your poem for us? So I will. So I that will. everybody can I uh, get to experience your beautiful work. <laughs> Thank you. Away. I wrote this poem a couple of months ago when I was really sitting down thinking, what has changed? A lot has changed. And this is what I penned. I miss the days. I miss the days when friendship was an invitation to laugh at everything and nothing. At shadows that danced like brooms, at spinach that got stuck between the teeth, 
I miss the days when friendship was a time to fly kites in between bites of hot dogs, maize, and sim symbols. Oh, I miss those days. I miss the days when friendship was a time to ride bicycles and count the passing clouds, creating our own musicals on stages made of grass. I miss those days. I miss the days when friendship was walking to church in long white socks throwing rocks. Now conversations have turned into a patronizing drumming to the ears. Dreams have turned into sermons. Invitations have turned into a trick to attend a mastermind class. If you don't buy my book, it means you don't love me, they scream. Even if the book doesn't have any meaning for you, keep your honesty aside and enjoy the ride of self-help. Business for breakfast, lectures for lunch, tidbits of tips for tea, and all of this, they say, is to make you grow. And yet each time they call, I shrink. It's another condescending call about my lack of commitment. Oh, so many people are committed these days. Are we all lunatics? Subscribe to this and get one free. This offer lasts for a week. Three steps to becoming great again. And yet all I want are the three steps to my friend's heart heart again. It's not the years that have changed us. It's lazy to blame it on our age. It's preposterous to claim that life happened. Our friendship wasn't a thing that just happened. It was who we were. I miss those days. Oh my goodness. This you know i read it but still when you when you know when you recite it it still it resonates something in me oh my goodness i'm i'm so moved um beverly and i thank you so much for today i thank you for engaging with you and meeting you i thank you for your work that you're you're doing you're doing amazing work thank you. Uh, you know i'm very a pleasure to meet you yeah. uh, a pleasure to meet you too um i know so many people will be inspired just by watching you and following your work after this and for me it's once again an honor to meet somebody who's creating um i, I love meeting people who are creating it's it, it you know it it really humbles me because you know you you take the time to actually give your dreams life and it's something that's very, that's not easy that we, we we need to start talking about as creative creatives waking up in the morning and giving your dreams life so I hence I'm always saying thank you to many people who create because it's you taking the time to honor yourself, honor your dreams, and give them life. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you for your work. Um, please, can you tell um, sus subscribers to subscribe? <laughs> please subscribe to this channel. Give me the full name of the channel. I will definitely. It's just Piwim. Yes. Piwim Mwabe. Yes, that's all. Thank you. Piwim Mwabe. Now you see my pronunciation. Piwim Mwabe. Please subscribe to this channel. Really? This phenomenal lady is changing the world. Thank you. It's an honor. Lovely to meet you. You are phenomenal. God bless you. May you keep on soaring. Thank keep on soaring. So much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.